Hey, I'm Pops, and I want to talk about King Spawn. For those of you who have not been reading the Spawn verse, I have to admit it's giving me pleasure. I know I'm way behind everybody else as far as real time, so there's plenty of issues to read after the ones I'm talking about. But here I'm going to be talking about issues six through eight. And for those of you who don't understand exactly what has happened in the Spawn verse, is that Al Simmons Spawn has sort of like broken the gateway, so it's like closed off between like death and heaven and hell and all those dynamics so it's kind of like he's broken those kinds of situations and what it did is it brought through other spawns so we now have like everyone coming together like a gunslinger spawn and medieval spawn and there are others that are out there and they're sort of like different uh, adventures and tasks and everything has been sort of like interwoven again between titles but you don't have to read one or the other to enjoy it so for instance if you go over to my gunslinger spawn review when Gunslinger crosses paths with Al, the, the main spawn, it's kind of explained why Gunslinger needs him and why he needs Gunslinger, right? Um, here in King Spawn, you see him uh, tying back to his roots. This has been really such a great run. Sean Lewis has done an amazing job of tapping into the oldest of books, dealing with like Kincaid and this sort of like abduction and murder situation with these kids in Psalms 137, you have sort of some sort of elements of mystery and supernatural that are here. You don't totally exact, exactly understand what's been going on, but just like we had uh, the clown show up in Gunslinger and you had some th issues there as far as why the, the clown is leveled up, why they would have conflict. You have him as well coming face to face with Wynn, the person that basically turned him into spawn. And that's kind of where we left off last time. And here you get, um, here's our credits, and you see here on the right, you see uh, Jason Wynn. He's become powered. He's come back to life. He's there to torment Spawn. He's there to antagonize. And uh, he, he has this rant and rave. Now, what was interesting was how uneven they keep you reading this book. Um, on the left, you can see that just out of the blue, the panel is turned completely sideways. And it has to do with the backstory of, you know, how did Jason get here? How did Kincaid get here? How did all of these elements from the past come through the gateway? And Jason is explaining all of this to Al and this thing called the Exodus Corps, right? The Ex Exodus Corporation. And then, of course, it comes to a head when Terry, who's been helping Al, confront Jason. Like, no. Now, Terry has just as much of a vendetta against Wynn as everyone else does. And he tries to uh, confront directly head on with his tech. And you can see it's not going well. And you see the last second Al screaming, no. Now, if you don't want any spoilers, you know, what you at least get an idea of the art and some of the different elements. But I'll tell you that even if it's spoiled, you still have a great journey um, because, you know, this is this, this tech suit, this exoskeleton Jason's wearing makes him way superior. Um, the art choice here, Javier Fernandez has some moments that are, I'm not, I'm not a, a big fan of this book. Th this sequence has a couple of panels that kind of shy away from his standard. I thought this was an odd choice, but basically, obviously he's just getting pummeled. Right. And Al responds right away and it's extremely violent and volatile. And you can just see here on the right, you can see what's left of spawn. Like after this battle and this explosion, he detonates the suit. So he, you know, Al is caught up in the middle of that. And you basically get just this graphic, horrific retaliation by Al. It says, then you'll suffer by them too. Like, you know, you made up these biblical rules. You said all these kinds of, obviously, Psalm 137, and obviously, eye for an eye. It literally uses uh, the knife, to just, just plucks the eye directly out. Like, it's, it's crazy. It's completely crazy. Beautiful and crazy. And then if Al is like, you know, from for hell hath no fury like a spawn scorned does it work i don't know uh, i will say that this this you know broken jaw mess remains of terry you know being popped back into place was awesome because you can just you literally sort of feel it in this journey everything kind of progresses and then it wraps up with this these mysterious characters moving through and you have you know what's where's Kincaid's remains because you know spawn and finally overcome they're piecing that together before we finally get to the close of the issue where we have the introduction of what's called the uh council of the priests and you basically have this throne it's been referred to this whole time you know why is he called king 
Why do they want him to be king? This is the direction the story is going to go and continue through seven and eight and early beyond eight. But we're going to stop at eight. And I will say that it was fun because I didn't totally know everything. Like I have to admit, I'm not an expert. Just a couple covers, a variant cover there on the left. And you see the narration here by Spawn talking through what's been going on. And again, notice the movement. Like there's always movement of everything. Right. And then Terry is still relevant to the story. And I will say that um, Sean Lewis does a good job trying to find a way to include him in this conversation and in this journey in this story, figuring out the mystery of the 137 and the 11. There's 11 priests. And then you have the violence is breaking out amongst them, right? Because they're going to try to lure Al Spawn into their ranks, take the helm of Spawn, elevating his powers, elevating their powers, and they can basically enact revenge. And here you have them fighting amongst each other, which, of course, when you're thrown into the throne, you can see how the torment is. Uh, the art is amazing. The art is incredible. Uh, lots of violence, lots of blood, and lots of chaos. Now, the flashback sequence, yeah, I didn't really care too much. It, it, it is torment. It's torment for Al. It's torment for Spawn. You can see in the top right that panel. I, oh, I don't know. Poor Terry doesn't have eyes. The expression on Spawn's face, just not a fan. Um, yeah, I thought this was, just, there were a couple of panels that just kind of got away from it all. But it, it ties to the torment, and you have basically Black Azrael. Azrael's coming through and explaining his plan, the torment, the torture. And then you have a cutaway. Now, the cutaway I thought was weird because of the pacing. The pacing seems strange because we're going to cut away to this character called Oracle. She has this young boy where she's there to, you know, snap the boy's neck. He's there to torment this kid. And yet she's submissive to this other creature, this Gaia, this earth. And it, it's giving her the vision of what the plan is and the plan with him on the throne. This is what they're trying to do so they can have control of everything. But this little boy matters, right? This boy matters. And the narration is a character that we don't see much. And then we kind of have this progression to here, the the spawn killer, this, this, this giant beast of a creature that's going to come to a head at the end of the book. It makes you want more. It makes you want more. Because a lot of this, to be honest, is even though we're getting elements along the way, these are still not setting us up for more of the battle, which comes in the next issue. I will say too, this book had like a great little commentary piece, which it talks about the parallel that they were trying to go for between this book and the original death of uh, Wanda, which is what which is what this is showing us. Well, that was great, by the way. Then we move into the next issue, and here you start to see Spawn because he leaves the battle that they were in the before. They're back in New York. They're trying to figure out the direction of this chaos being lured into this battle from the past. So you have all of these different creatures that are coming forth, all these different things that he's having to face from his past, these different things. And it says, uh, imagine your entire past rushing at you like a living nightmare, rampaging through the streets, destroying everything around you. The court of priests shows, it's like, um, shows that they make Spawn vulnerable, not by attacking him directly, but instead by eviscerating everything he's sworn to protect. See, the court of priests knows that the best way to hurt Spawn is not direct combat. They can't, they can't win, right? And they know that. It starts right away. He knows he's being lured into this stuff, right? And he basically is screaming at Harry to get safe, and he just starts going after them one by one. He starts taking them out. And you sort of kind of get... Uh, a brief rundown, which I think is really good for me, but it was good for probably other folks. It's like, this is Tremor, right? A man, Hiddleston mutated. Here's Zira. Like, and just, you see God's greatest angels led the seraphim, right? You see him sort of kind of taking on, and more importantly, you also see him use different powers in different ways. Um, so the next part, you see him use the cape. Look at the cape coming to life to take on um, Mammon. Um, the Lord of Hell, right? You see him, the, the cape swings around uh, the other direction. So there's movement from all sides before you have Azrael come forth and basically explain the Psalms 137 metaphor. And you sort of like set up, um, again, just, just really interesting. You know, do you remember what it says? Happy is the one who seizes your enemy's infants and bashes them against the rock. Because the infants aren't simply children spawned. They're whatever your enemy may cherish. 
So he he's explaining why he's motivated to bring Spawn to the to the helm. He thinks it's his way of enacting revenge. He thinks it's his chance because he's got his wing ripped off. He's going insane. He understands he's going insane. He understands that Spawn is capable of so much more. And then the book ends or moves the last half of the book is just the violent chaos that breaks out the fight. You know, what is he able to maintain? And it's, it's, he, he doesn't want to be a pawn to them. He's like, no, I'm not playing by their rules. I'm not playing by anyone's rules. I'm not, I'm not conceding to the agenda and the art and the fight is fantastic. I think you would love all of this. This is just a great fun comic book to read and enjoy. And I will say that it is interesting to see the dynamics of different characters at odds. And there's really no great right answer. Like everyone has grievances against everyone. It all, you know, violence is begatting more violence. And everyone kind of doesn't know exactly kind of where they where they fit into everything, right? It just kind of, the story is going to continue because you know that the story is not over. It doesn't come to a resolution exactly. It just kind of keeps moving. And they, they, they give enough information to, to spawn. So Al, so he kind of knows what's going on and he gets the information. He talks to Terry and now he kind of knows what to do. And reality is it's going to come to a head against that other character. You have Oracle. And what is it that she's been communicating with, right? This, this, this green Gaia earth creature. And I didn't really want to spoil this too much, but just give you an idea of how off the chain, almost like, um, Clive Barker-esque this gets. Look at this thing that he ends up facing at the end. This is what's coming, right? This is where we're going, right? Uh, it says, every, an every angel God cast from his sight arrives at our doorstep begging the goddess for favors. Go ahead, spew your lies, right? And it's just it's just chaos. And then, of course, you have that the callback to the creature that we saw earlier, right? And then you have this boy who's now wearing the full armor, and he's been training and he basically is gaining control it takes off the helmet he's king the king slayer this is where we're at and this is where we're going to wrap um you know we don't have, have a lot of modern comics that we can wrap our head around and have a good time with and if you're not reading spawn is at least something that i can recommend so that's my take on it i know so many of you have already been reading these books let me know what you guys think i'm going to be carrying on i appreciate you guys for listening and hanging out with me so much i am pops Right? And I'm not.